So what is cognitive science? Um, we were the first cognitive science department in the world. Uh, we have this banner up around campus. Uh, and we have you know, a few dozen professors. And I think if you ask anybody, if you just corner anybody and you ask them this question, what is cognitive science, I'm sure they will all give you a kind of a slightly different answer. Um, and it's because it's a very multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary field. You might hear these terms a lot. Uh, and I want to go into it kind of what they mean. So it's a, it's a really diverse major. And I think that it's motivated by some very fundamental questions about, uh, about ourselves. So one is how do we think, act, and learn? So this is like very fundamental to ourselves as humans, right? Um, and but what, what do you mean by we, right? So who's we? So we meaning people, right? So we kind of study people and, um, and how we think, act, and learn. Uh, they could also be animals, right? So we have a faculty who do research and teach about animal models of animal cognition and studying how um, they socialize and, and they behave. And obviously we can't talk to animals directly. I guess most of us probably can't, uh, but we can study them indirectly and observe them and, and, and how they behave and such. And then also computers, right? So like, you know, there are more computers in the world than people now. It's kind of scary to think about, but there, there are way more computers than people in the world, especially if you count these things, right? I mean, these things are, are full-fledged computers. I mean, these things in our pockets, uh, there are way more cell phones than people in the world, right? So, so in terms of like intelligent entities, you know, computers really are, <laughs> are, are have taken over, right? So, and, and we want to figure out how, quote unquote, computers think, act, and learn. And what does that mean? And then, you know, beyond just being a very scholarly major in terms of learning about these really deep fundamental ideas, it's actually a really practical major as well. So the third kind of big question that I think that we, we address in this major is how can all this knowledge be used to build new technologies, right? So we have a lot of people who are interested in, in not only studying, you know, the science of all this, but also in the engineering and the design and building new technologies using what we know about, say, people or animal or computers. Okay, so that was a very high level definition. Um, I think that, you know, it's a really unique mix of a lot of different kinds of fields. And if you look at our course, uh, our, our department webpage, and you look at the, the professors in our department, they come from all sorts of academic backgrounds. They got their degrees in all sorts of things, um, you know, including, you know, majors and fields such as anthropology, computer science, uh, which is my own background, linguistics, neuroscience, philosophy, psychology, sociology, and, and many, many more fields. So it's it's this really interesting major in that like your professors actually came from very different disciplines and we came together to form a, a really unique major. Whereas, you know, many of us can be teaching and doing research in a much more traditional department. So before I worked here, I was a computer science professor. And so were several of my colleagues. We were in traditional computer science departments and then we moved over to this uh, very interdisciplinary department. And we have people from neuroscience or psychology and such. And so I think it's a, it's a really unique department in that regard. Um, so I think another really cool thing about our department is that not only does it have a lot of intellectual depth, right? You, we, you know, when you're taking these courses, you're thinking about big ideas, you're doing a lot of uh, scholarly readings, but it's also really deeply practical, right? So you're actually going to actually learn some extremely practical skills that are going to be useful in, in all sorts of jobs. So, you know, including but not limited to, here are just some examples off the top of my head. So computer programming is a really big one, right? So, you know, uh, there's a lot of talk about people learning to code and learning to, to do programming to build software. And we have many, many classes that, uh, that, that teach you that. Uh, machine learning. So some of you might have heard of uh, terms like machine learning or artificial intelligence. This has gotten a huge amount of resurgence in, in recent years, and it's been all over the news. And in fact, some of the very early machine learning research came out of the cognitive uh, science department here, and it was even before it was a department, it was kind of a research, um, it was uh, a bunch of collection of research labs, and some very early work in machine learning and AI was done here. And now 30, 40 years later, this stuff has really just taken over everything. I mean, everything you interact with on your phone, on your computers, on the web, is powered by a lot of machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, behind the scenes. Data science. So some of you might have heard this word being thrown around a lot in the press. We have a you know, UCSD has a new data science institute that sprung up with some you know large alumni donations. Um, this field of data science is everywhere, um, and we uh, we run a lot of classes that are related to data science. Um, user centered research. So uh, if you if you're interested in doing stuff like product design or user experience design, user interface design, um, a lot of our core uh, design and user interface type of 
classes are, are centered in our department. Uh, experimental methods. Um, so if you're interested in doing more scientific research, or even like in a business setting, if you're doing market research, doing user experiments, uh, you learn a lot of this stuff. Human and organizational psychology, right? So like if, you, if you're running any kind of organization, if you're in management, if you're in just leading a team, like you're basically working in any job, you know, unless you are you know, an independent person working by yourself, pretty much 99.999% you know, of us here are gonna have to work in organizations and teams with people and understanding how humans work and how organizations work is gonna be critical. Um, and finally, you know, something I call culturally relevant communications, right? So very related to this is that uh, we are increasingly working on very diverse uh, multinational global teams, right? You know, many, many organizations that we're a part of, including the university here. I mean, if you look around, people come from all sorts of different cultural backgrounds, social backgrounds from different countries and such. So understanding kind of uh, cross-cultural communications issues, I think is, is super important. So I think this set of stuff is like just so important to, um, to in terms of like getting jobs and such. Okay, so to round this out, thinking about careers, if you're in a, uh, in a major such as in say computer science, then you know, yeah, people go off and do different things, but many, many people end up working as programmers or software developers in say, you know, some kind of an engineering role. Um, you know, if you're in certain majors that are more pre-med based, right, many people end up going to health sciences or healthcare or medical school um, afterwards. And, and our, our students really do go on to a lot of things, um, but here's some examples. So um, they do go on to software development jobs, um, websites, making mobile apps, user interface design, um, user research, product stuff, machine learning, and, um, and also just going on to graduate school and becoming, uh, becoming lab scientists. Um, there's you know, a lot of companies, you know, we, have, we have kind of the usual mix of technology companies, nonprofits, schools, you know, all, all sorts of things. In terms of graduate studies, right, we have alumni go on to both master's and PhD programs in, in many fields, right, computer science and human computer interaction, neuroscience, medicine, psychology, occupational therapy, I mean, many, many, many areas. You know, in some, I think this is just a really interesting and, um, and unique major because um, it sits, I, I feel like we sit at the intersection of a lot of, um, a lot, both a lot of things that are classically interesting, right? So these fields like anthropology, psychology, um, neuroscience, um, sociology, these things are classically, you know, long-term things that have been of interest for a long time, but we also sit at this cusp of, of new technologies that are, um, that are really coming down the pipeline. And it's a, I think it's a really unique mix that is, that is, that's hard to get elsewhere, right? So I, I've seen, you know, if you want to classify uh, many kinds of university majors, you know, there are majors that are, uh, they're, you know, they're called the classics, right? They're, they're, they're majors in, in fields that are very enduring and long-term and scholarly, and, and they'll give you this very, uh, very, you know, deep intellectual education, right, in certain areas. And I think on the very other extreme, there are majors that are extremely pragmatic, extremely vocationally driven, so extremely job oriented, and they'll, they'll you know, they'll prepare you well for, I would say, you know, the media jobs that are coming on the market now. And I think we sit at this really interesting middle point where, um, you know, I, I I, I obviously can't, uh, can't claim to be able to predict the future, but I, I think we said this really interesting middle point where we can train you to have really practical skills that you can use on the job market in the coming years. But I think this broader education in, you know, in the classics will ultimately um, serve you well because of how fast technology and how fast the world is changing. You know, the jobs that are going to exist in 10 years or in 20 years are going to be nothing like what are gonna to exist today, right? So we think that field X, Y, Z, or these jobs are so hot today, but like, think about, you know, when your parents were in school or when your grandparents were even in school, right? I mean, that's like less than a lifetime ago, you know, what was the hot thing then? Like, those industries don't even exist anymore. Those jobs don't even exist anymore. So, um, so I think having that basis in something that's um, longer lasting and more enduring would just help you as you think about what you're gonna do um, later in your life. And I, I wanna end with an anecdote that, you know, I talked to some of our recent alum thinking about undergraduate education in the Cogside department. And I think a, a, you know, an overarching theme I hear from, from people is that you know, they really don't know what it is quite about our major that, that they feel is something special or unique, but they feel like there was something there, right? That they, that, that they got that people in perhaps in other majors that are more single discipline didn't get. And it's hard for them to put a finger on it, but they, they felt like there was, there was some kind of a singular 
uh, unique value in it.